Hey everyone, Don Georgievich here with you today. I hope you are well. If you have a phone interview coming up, then I've got some great strategies that I want to share with you in this video. Now, the reason that you've got a phone interview is because your employer is pre-screening you, which means it's a nice way of saying they really don't want to waste their time interviewing you in person. They kind of want to try you out on the phone first. That way they can talk to you, they can see what you sound like, and they can ask a few questions that are going to help them to quickly qualify you as to whether they want to meet you in person or not and discuss um, the job at hand. So that's what a phone interview is. Sometimes they can last uh, five minutes, uh, sometimes they can be more like 20 minutes, or they can go on for a full hour. It just depends on, on how the conversation goes and what their intent is. But usually an employer can qualify somebody for, uh, as to whether they want to meet them or not within like five or 10 minutes on the phone. So I'm gonna help you improve your phone interview skills. So let's get started. All right, first thing is be enthusiastic. You need to be enthusiastic on the phone because they can't see you. They can't see your hand gestures. They can't see your face, your facial movements, your eyes or anything. They don't even know if you're looking at them. So that's the whole point of the phone interview. You have to communicate all of that enthusiasm in your voice and you channel it through the phone to the other end so they can hear that you're alive and breathing on the other end and that you're the kind of person that they want to meet. So you want to be enthusiastic. So how do you be enthusiastic on the phone? Well, one thing is you can smile. When you smile, that you can hear a smile through the other end. You might be able to hear me um, in this video. You might, obviously you see me, but if you're just listening, you can hear that I'm smiling right now because I'm having a good time making this video and I'm communicating that through this video. So smile is definitely gonna help you. A great way to remember that is just to draw a smiley face on your paper, right? Take some notes, put a smiley face on there and look at that when you're, when you're talking to them and that's just gonna be your reminder to smile when you're on the phone, okay? Next one is change your state. Now, what the heck do I mean by change your state? Well, you, you, we generally have two states that we're in. We're either in a passive state where we're kind of just talking like this and everything is smooth and everything is normal or we're in a more active state and we're more excited our blood is flowing we're um, our posture has changed we're full of energy um, we can hear voice fluctuations um, when we talk so a good way to get yourself in to change your state from a passive to an active you can very simply do this I mean, one way is to do jumping jacks. You can just do them up and down. Another way, a little safer way, if you don't want to do the jumping jacks, just sit in your chair. Just sit down and just put your arms like this and go <laughs> breathe up and breathe in and out, in and out, putting your arms up, down, up, down. And you do that for a couple of minutes and you're going to start feeling some tingling going on and uh, you might, might even feel a little bit dizzy. So do that when you're sitting down. That's going to change your state. It's gonna get your blood flowing, it's gonna get you a lot more active, it's gonna change your voice, and you're gonna sound crisper, you're gonna sound more confident. Now, another thing is to change your posture. Now, if you look at me when I make this video, if I turn sideways, you can see that my back is sitting up straight. And you want your back to be sitting up straight when you're talking to them on the phone. This is gonna help your voice, it's gonna make your voice resonate stronger, it's gonna come through clear, and you're gonna sound like you're alive on the other end. And that's the kind of person that they're gonna to wanna to meet. So change your posture. Now naturally, when you change your state from a passive one to an active one, that's almost gonna inherently change your posture. Um, another thing to do is change your voice. Now, as you can hear me in this video, I, I mean, I don't always talk like this. I don't always talk full of excitement and stuff like that, but I've changed my state from a passive one to an active one so I can communicate my message to you a lot better. And you're gonna actually, you might actually believe some of the things that I'm telling you in this video because of the enthusiasm that I'm conveying while I'm teaching you these techniques. Now, when you change your state and you change your posture, that's almost inherently going to change your voice. Now, when you, when you get on the phone, I don't want you to talk to him like this, I don't want you to talk to really fast, um, but I want you to have some life in your voice so that they can hear you, they can feel you, and they can decide that, hey, that's the kind of person we wanna meet. That's the kind of person that we want in this position. Someone who is full of energy. Now, don't overdo it either, but just don't, don't, just don't show up and talk like this. Hi, my name is Don, and I want to talk to you about the position. Just say, no, hey, my name is Don, and I'm really interested in this position. I'd love to hear more about it. Something like that. I mean, who's the kind of person you're going to want to meet? Number one or number two? Exactly. 
dress professionally. But even though this is a phone interview and they can't see what you're doing, now if it's a Skype interview, that's another story. Definitely dress professionally. But if it's a phone interview, you're just going to talk to them on the phone like this. Still, put on, an, uh, put on a, uh, a nice suit. That's just going to make you feel better. It's going to make you feel more professional and it's going to help you deliver a better interview. Trust me on this. It really is. Okay, let's move on. Next one. Have a list of questions for them. And don't just get on the phone and listen to them and answer their questions. They want to hear from you too. The reason I want you to have questions is I want you to ask them questions about the job, the culture, things that are going to help you make a decision about whether this is the place you want to work at or not. I can't imagine that you want to work every job that you get an interview for. I mean, who does? You're there to investigate them. You want to see if they have something to offer you so that you can go in and work a job that you're happy doing and um, they can have somebody um, doing work that, that's happy there and they can get things done and everybody's happy. If one person in the agreement uh, isn't happy, then it's just bad for everybody. So that's why I want you to have good questions to ask and they can be simple. Don't ask detailed questions about their finances and things like that. Ask things that are going to help you make a decision as to whether you want to work there or not. Ask them about the culture, what it's like to work there, um, what can you expect out of the first three months, uh, what are, ask them what some of the problems are that, the, that are facing this position or their department, and then maybe offer some solutions if you can. That's one way to do it. I actually have a whole bunch of questions in the complete interview answer guide um, that will help you determine appropriate questions to ask. Okay, let's move on. Next one. When you're on the phone with them, never interrupt. Never interrupt them. Let them talk. You can't see when you can't see any uh, nonverbal cues from them, like you know that they're done talking. So listen to them, and wait two to three seconds after they finish talking before you start talking. Just put a little pause in there. Now, if you're in an interview one on one, you don't have to do this because you can get cues from them to see that they're done talking. Maybe just something on their face that says they're done talking. But on the phone, it's a little bit different. So wait for those um, uh, verbal cues. When they, don't, when they stop talking, wait two to three seconds, and then you can go ahead and start talking. And you kind of just play ping pong back and forth. And don't be so eager to talk. Sometimes you have we have a lot of energy in us and we just want to talk, 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 or we want to babble. They, maybe they ask us a question about something and we digress and we start talking about uh, this project and then we digress into another project and then we just start telling them a whole bunch of stuff they don't even want to hear that they never even asked us. So avoid that. When they ask you a question, give them the answer. If they want to hear more about you or from you about a certain question, they'll ask you for more information. Simple as that. That way you can keep your, your responses short because if one person dominates the question, like if they're just talking for two or three minutes while you, uh, at a time, it, it's hard for the other person on the other end, um, either way, you or them, to, to follow their train of thought. You need short um, conversation bursts, maybe you know, 15, 20 seconds. You know, they talk, you talk. They talk, you talk, back and forth. That way it makes it a conversation and it's a lot easier to comprehend and digest everything that's going on in the conversation versus someone just talking to you the whole time. And you get boring, they get bored and uh, it's hard to follow up the train of thought. Okay, next one. Um, speak when spoken to. So when they ask you a question, give them an answer and then stop. It's kind of more of the same. Um, try not to volunteer too much information because the whole point of the phone interview is to be brief and to just do a quick initial um, gathering of information so they can find out a little bit about you, you can find out about them, and then you can see if you want to go a little bit further with an in-person interview. Okay, next one. Closing the interview. Now, you, you want to have something to say at the end of the interview to wrap it up rather than just saying, okay, goodbye. I mean, how would that sound? Like, well, it was great meeting you, Don. Okay, goodbye. Now, that doesn't work. What you want to do is you want to have something prepared ahead of time that you plan to say when you, uh, when you exit the interview. So, you want to find out if, if you meet their needs. I mean, can you actually do the job? So, you can ask them. It's one question you can ask. You can say, hey, um, do, you think that, uh, do you think that I'd be a good fit in this position? Or based on, based on what you've heard from me today, do you think I'd be a good fit for this position? And they're either going to say yes or no or we're not sure. 
Now, if they say, we're not sure, or eh, maybe not, then that gives you the opportunity to turn things around. Because that's that right there, they're telling you that they have some concerns about what you can do for them. So this is your big opportunity to say, well, wait a minute, I think you misunderstood something. Um, I can do those things and here's, here's how I can do those. So it gives you another opportunity to sell yourself before they write you off. Okay? Um, ask them about the next steps. So after the interview, after, the, after you're done talking, they're like, hey, it was great meeting you, you can say, Hey, so what are the next steps? Are you going to have in-person interviews or are you going to continue with more phone interviews? What would be the next steps and when can I hear from you again? Those would be great ways to follow up and close your phone interview. All right, next one. Say thank you. At the end of the interview, thank them for their time. Say, hey, you know, thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Jones. It was great meeting you today. I really enjoyed uh, hearing more about your company and the position. And um, I hope that uh, we can continue this conversation in the future. Something like that. And while you are interviewing with them, find out what some of their problems are. And then try to recite those back at the interview at the end of the interview and say, you know, hey, those problems that you're having, I really think that I can help you um, solve those problems or something like that. But first you have to find out what they're struggling with and then at the end of the interview you can say, hey, these are things that I can help you with. I think it'd be a great asset. So I look forward to talking to you again. Make sense? I thought so. All right, so next one here. Have a smooth voice when you're talking. Now, when you, when you talk for a while, you might kind of wear out your voice if you're not used to doing that. So I encourage you to have a glass of water next to you while you are doing the interview. Just water, I wouldn't do coffee or tea, just straight up water. And you can also take, if you're worried about your voice, you can take a medicated cough drop. And this will kind of numb your throat a little bit and you'll be able to get a little bit more mileage out of your voice than you normally would. All right, next one. Try to avoid saying um or ah uh, or you know. These are common filler words that we interject into things that we say and there's actually a reason that we do this. We are, when you're talking to somebody, you want to hold their attention for a longer period of time but you're not sure what you're going to say. So you stick in a filler word like um and that kind of holds their attention and then you continue on. But it sounds bad. But just so you know, the reason that you're sticking them in, your brain, your brain is sticking those filler words in there to string together a longer statement so that you don't lose their attention. But it just sounds bad, so don't stick those in. It might take a little bit of practice. Um, you can even try recording yourself, get yourself a video camera, record yourself delivering some common answers to some questions, and see if you don't stick in those filler words. Try to avoid them at all costs. They just sound terrible in the end. Take notes, get yourself, pen and a paper. I have notes here when I make these videos um, because when I go through them sometimes more things pop into my mind while I'm making this video to you so I'll go and I'll write them down so I can circle back during this video and tell you more about those later. So I encourage you to do the same thing in the interview. Have a pen and a pad of paper and write things down. First you should have some notes to help guide you. to uh, Have some notes about some of the projects that you worked on, some of the things that you want to talk about. And then while they're, while you're going through the interview and they're asking you questions, if more things pop into your mind, write those down so that you can circle back to them later in the interview. And I also encourage you to have a pen and paper in a one-on-one -on -one interview as well. And when you're face-to-face, -face, definitely always write things down. It just makes it a lot easier, makes it more professional, and it helps you remember things that, uh, you might, that you might just forget, things that you want to ask. So at the end of the interview, when they're like, so do you have any questions for us? And you're like, um, uh, I'm not sure. But if you would have just wrote those down, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay? Make sense? Next one. At the end of the interview, you're going to kind of have a sense as to whether you want to work for them or not. And maybe you don't. Maybe you're like, whoa. This job takes 60 hours a week, I don't want it, or I have to travel, whatever. Maybe there's something about it in the interview that you don't like. So you have to weigh this out as to whether you want to proceed or not. So if you already have a job and you're just not interested in this one, then, then maybe just flush it down the toilet. Or if you're not working and you're still not interested in this job, kind of hang on to this. Don't let it die. They might be interested in you, so you might want to continue the conversation just to see where it goes. 
because for one, this will give you an opportunity to continue in the interview process. I mean, like I said, maybe they're interested in you, but you're not quite sold on them. Go ahead, keep interviewing with them. One, this is gonna give you practice. Two, it's gonna give you more opportunity to find out more about them. And maybe if they get down to the point where they're like, you know what? We're really, we really like you, would really like you to do this. And you say, you know what? I'm just not sold on you. I'm just, I'm just not sold on it. They might be so in love with you that they're like, you know what? Maybe, the, maybe, maybe this position isn't right for you, but what about if we offered you this position? Or we took away these things from this job that, that you don't like. So now they're customizing the position just for you or they're creating a new one for you. So I encourage you after the phone interview to keep, to entertain the offer. If they're still interested in you, keep listening and let them, let them work on selling you. Don't just tell them, no, I'm not interested and walk away. I mean, unless, unless you're just totally dead set against it, but I highly recommend you stick around, just go through the motions. This practice is going to help you for future interviews. When you, keep, when you keep entertaining the process, when you keep going through the interview process, and this is gonna help you, this is gonna help boost your confidence. This is gonna make you feel better about yourself while you're interviewing because people are talking to you and they're interested in you and they like you, and how can that not make you feel good? Do all those things and you're gonna be in good shape. I think that's all I got. That's all I got for you today. Hey, if you would like a transcript of today's session, I'm gonna put a link in the description down there. So just, uh, Look for that and uh, that'll take you over to my site where you can get a full transcript of everything that I talked about. That's all I have for you today, my friend. Thank you so much for watching this video or if you're listening to this on a podcast, thank you. If you found it helpful, uh, make sure to like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. If you would like more detailed insights from me, head on over to jobinterviewtools.com slash top 10 and grab my top 10 guide to answering questions. It kind of looks like this if you print it out. It's a free download. You can just grab that from my site and that will put you on my email list where you'll get even more detailed insights from me delivered directly to your inbox and these are things that I only share in email so if you want to hear from me go ahead and do that I'll also put a link to that in the uh, in the description below stay on your game my friend there is no one else like you and there will never be this is your greatest advantage and the world needs that special gift that only you have thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video you can download the PDF transcript for this video in the description below thanks again for watching if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll thank you again in the next video.